So I'm going to show you how I organize my studio because I do work in four different mediums and I had a question from Tim who is new to the course and I wanted to just give him an overview of how I organize my studio because he kind of has the same issue that a lot of us do have when we work in different mediums and my studio right now is a mess but it's kind of an organized mess. I like to think of it that way because it's cluttered, but I kind of know where to find things. So let me just show you how I've done this. And this um, studio right now, as most of you know, I'm renting it and I'm lucky because it is quite large. It's part of an old uh, Grange Hall where they used to have a lot of big activities here, but it was basically vacant for like 30 years. So anyways, um, now I have this area over here, which I dedicate to the cold wax and oil painting because it's got a large wall where I can attached panels and they're hung on plywood walls so they're pretty you know not not totally heavy but the panels can get quite large like 48 by 48 so number one I've got this plywood wall and I have uh, screws at certain intervals so that I can just hang these 48 by 48 panels or six foot panels whatever I decide to do and then the next thing I did was I had this um, large cart made it's on wheels so notice that a lot of the things that I found were great for organizing have wheels on them. So this cart, it doesn't have a lot of stuff on top of it now, but when I start painting all my palettes and I'll bring over the paints that I'm using, that kind of thing, and they will go on this table so that I can roll it around from painting to painting. And um, it's got a lower shelf there for things. I try not to put too many heavy things on there because it gets really hard to push that around. And the idea is to keep things, everything, really mobile and easy to move you know from one painting to the next so you can see right now I'm I'm working toward a show and right now what I'm trying to do is just get a lot of things started some of these are closer to being say finished but you know uh, I, I because I'm working toward cohesion in a big show um, a lot of these are going to be reevaluated so now over here uh, this is a cart that happened to be left over at the Grange and I just covered every shelf with plastic because you know I, they're letting me borrow it but I don't own it and so what I've done is I dedicated this cart to tools that might be used in you know a couple different mediums like definitely oils and cold wax that's why you see my spatulas and my silicone tools and you know here's a container for um, Gamsol and other solvents my cooking oil for cleaning brushes and then this one over here has the large brushes, the long handled brushes. So they're all here. They could be used in acrylic as well. If I decided to use some of these things there, I just roll this cart over into, you know, where I'm working on acrylics. Um, and that could be in this area too. But the point is that everything on this cart could be used in, in, in a couple of different mediums. So that's how I did that. And then I've got a, a cart uh, on wheels that I got at Costco here. I'm going to stand back here so you can kind of see. It's one of the taller carts, but the shelves are adjustable. And what I do on this cart, it pretty much stays here. So when I hold the workshop here, these are like um, community items. Like, for example, if I go up close, you can see there's Ziploc bags, there's stretch wrap for covering pallets. Um, I've got uh, packing tape, so I always know where to find it. Plus, there's other kinds of tape like duct tape, you know, it's in a box. And then I've got my cleaning materials down here. I've got gloves on the bottom and, you know, things to cover the floor. Uh, this cutting tool here, which is nice for getting a straight edge. I keep that here. I've got some collage papers in here, more tape. Um, so it's, it's not the best organization, but when I have a class here, of course, I clean this up a little bit more and make it easier for people to find things. But just note that, you know, as you go around the cart here, um, there's so much room, there's so much room here, and all you have to really do is um, compartmentalize things, like have a shoe box that has all of your, you know, your wipes in it so that they're easy to find and easy to move around. Um, the more you can have these little containers, it's cool because, you know, it's just, you know where to find things. Thumbtacks, toothpicks, I've got nails, you know, everything's in a little container. And, uh, yeah, so there's that cart that's, again, it's on wheels. I could move it, but this one is pretty much staying put right here. Now here, I would say this is my most beloved cart because it has everything to do with mark making, and I use mark making in all four mediums, so this cart gets rolled around a lot. 
you can see I've got my inks on top, the dry mark making, erasers, um, different kinds of my charcoal powder, of course, and the cotton puffs here. You know, anything that I'm going to need to, like if I'm going to work with graphite and it's, it's on this cart, then I need to be able to grab these cotton puffs right here. That's why they're here. I've got some Letraset old stuff that I got probably at the secondhand store. And going down here, um, more mark making tools, but you know, as you go down, these are kind of things that I bring out at, at more specific times. So they're gonna be um, more maybe toward the end of a painting where I'm doing refining. And then down here, I've got my pan pastels and you know, extras of things that I use a lot like these. Um, I love these solid markers here. Um, they're Sakura and they're permanent, they dry fast, um, they're amazing, they're oil-based. So I usually just have the white and the black, but anyways, I, I got extras of those because I kind of go through those really quickly. And again, this cart is on wheels. When I got the cart, you can kind of see it's got this plastic film here to, to cover the, uh, this lattice here so that things don't fall through. And you know, they're kind of handy, but this cart, you know, you put it together when you get it and it wasn't that expensive. I got it on Amazon and you get it pretty fast. Um, okay, so that's how I organize my mark making materials. When it comes to, you know, a dedicated cabinet for the mediums you work in, I mean, it's a great idea. And I, I had these tall cabinets made. They're about, uh, I think, let's see, um, I think they're eight feet tall and about maybe, let's see how wide these are. Um, looks like about 18 inches deep and you know and then some of these actually uh, when I had these made I had this idea to hey how about if they could open up so yeah the, the the door is actually warped and it drags on the floor but aside from that and it making the sound I mean this is where I keep my oils all anything related to oil paints the cold wax medium um, you know the large gallon containers of cold wax medium and you know things like that so that works well in keeping my oil and cold wax in one cabinet. My flat file is, you know, one of the first things I got because I lost my, uh, I had my, my favorite flat file in the old house and it was all made of wood and it was from some architect that, you know, they were sitting in a barn and I got them for like 50 bucks. It was just amazing, but I lost it. So, but I found out that it's really, really important to be able to uh, organize your papers right so I've got labels on them and like the top shelf here is for monotype printing on rice paper and I've got you know adhesive papers I've got watercolor paper um, Bristol Yupo glassine I've got some a drawer for finished work collage paper work in progress uh, stencils I've labeled all these drawers you know I could do a better job of labeling but right now things are a little bit chaotic <laughs> And then here's another cart. Everybody needs tools, you know, whether you're framing or making a cradle panel or whatever you're doing, you know, sanding, cinching something, clamping something, drilling. I put all my tools on one little cart and that way again, complete with an extension cord and clamps that just hang on this handle here. So this is another cart that pretty much stays here. I used to lose things um, because I was spread out over our house like in four different areas of our house, like I had one studio that was encaustic and one that was monotype and one that was cold wax and one that was acrylic. And it just drove me crazy because if I had a hammer downstairs, well, I couldn't find it if I was upstairs. So now I've got a tool cart and I am pretty much on one level here. So I, I do feel very, very fortunate. Coming over here toward the back of the studios where I do encaustic because anyone who does encaustic knows that it's very messy and I covered the floors with cardboard and tarp and you know, even though the floor is full of asbestos I do my best to try and keep it you know clean I've got foam mats down here I've got when I have students here they like the foam mats everything's a little bit condensed down because I haven't been doing encaustic uh, recently but you know some of the griddles are out here and you know I, I was getting ready for a holiday show so that's why some of these things are sitting out my brushes and you know my frying pans and and here's uh, some tins just sitting out here. And then back here, I just wanna show you this real quickly. Uh, it's really kind of nice to get strong magnets, whoops, strong magnets, and then you just can attach these tins, uh, attach them to the steel panel here. 
And the panel itself, I got it cut by a local steel, uh, steel and copper guy just on my street, you know, and it cost like 10 bucks and he drilled the holes for me so I could screw it into the wall like that. And, you know, it's just a great way to get some of these uh, encaustic paints off your table and in a way that you can see the colors you have. And like, you know, here they are sitting on my table, but ideally they'd be attached to the wall and then they'd be off the table. I had this, this is actually a cradled panel here that I used in a show. I think it's like, yeah, it's 48 by 48 and I just painted it. Actually, the, the gallery owner painted it to match his walls. And then all these screws were screwed in at a very precise place so I could create a grid with my six by six pieces. I still have that in my studio. It's a really great way for me to hang up all my small works as I finish them and you know, see how cohesive they are, how they look together. And then I store my encaustic supplies because there are quite a few of them. Most of them have been obtained by secondhand you know, stores and pancake griddles, pots and pans. These are things from our house after it burned. I still keep this here because you never know. I might like uh, try to get some texture from some of those materials. And miscellaneous things down in the bin. These are all mark making tools in this bin that were pretty much donated to me after the fire. And going up here, I've got glass jars. Um, that obviously is more used for, for solvents and things like that. But this cabinet, has my things related to encaustic and only encaustic like you know i'm not going to use frying pans for oil and cold wax unless i make my own cold wax medium which yeah then i could use one of those but for the most part they're just used for encaustic related things my demo resin and my electric tools and you know all the encaustic paints so that's that one so that's my dedicated encaustic cabinet and then Coming over here, I have another cabinet that's dedicated to things that are for packing. So I found that, you know, we get inundated with cardboard and bubble wrap and all kinds of things. So I try to save a representative amount that I think I'll need. And this is my cabinet where I know I can find, you know, things for uh, mostly packing. And then one last cabinet I want to show you. Here's a table where I recently did some framing. Um, this, this wouldn't normally be sitting out here, but you know, again, if I have a table, I can just throw stuff on it and pack it up and, and then take it down again and then paint on it later. So, and this is a cabinet for acrylic because I do, you know, I still love acrylic and there's so, it's, it, it's the immediacy of it that I love. And so, um, I did kind of invest in getting these larger gallon containers and then I moved them into um, actually, they come in buckets, more like these Liquitex buckets, and then they have to be moved into the gallon containers for ease of pouring. And then once they're in the gallon containers, I move those into squeeze bottles of different sizes. So here's that size, and then I've got even smaller bottles. And I feel like getting started with acrylic is so easy. Uh, it's great for play. And then as I, you know, sort of put more and more layers on, and I to stress the surface, I like to move into cold wax and oil, but sometimes not. Sometimes I'll just stay in the acrylic medium. So I think that's pretty much how I organize my studio. Um, photography equipment's everywhere, but um, I'm going to be doing another video on some of these other ideas for organizing tools like this. It's really just a test tube rack and then another little test tube rack for my other things. I'm always losing tweezers and compasses and things that I use a lot, but then they get lost because they're so small. Um, and then, you know, little sets of paints like this, it's great to have them in a little container like this because you can lift it up, move it around, and everything's in one place. So I hope that's helpful, and um, thanks for your interest, and thanks for the question. Bye now.